Hi everybody, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com. Welcome back. This is our third session in the City Slicker Sewing Tutorial and today we will be finishing our bag. We're going to craft the straps and install the zipper and then we'll be able to use it and next week I'll be back with a new sewing project for you. So last session we left off we finished our interior and then we left off with needing to position that inside of the bag. So I want to show you how I do that inside of the exterior. So in the first video we crafted the exterior and we have that and I folded the top lip over approximately one inch and then I folded the interior lip over one inch and your interior will stay you know right side out because then when you insert that into the exterior it will be correct so I always begin by lining up the side panels the side seams and once I know those are aligned I put some pins in to hold it in place and then I do the other side and this just keeps everything from shifting and then from there it's very easy to continue pinning across the front. And if for any reason your interior doesn't fit perfectly and those seams are not aligned, go ahead and make those adjustments now. You can go back in and if you need to stitch it, um, use a little wider seam allowance to line it up. You can do that now. So I have the inside interior of the bag in place and now we are ready to craft the zipper top the zipper panel so for the zipper panel I'm going to use the same navy twill that I used for the exterior body and you're going to need two of these panels which measure six inches wide by 15 inches long you're going to press those in half and then stitch down either short side. And this is using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. stitching at the beginning and the end to reinforce. I'm going to repeat that for the other panel. created two little pockets here which are going to flip right side out and poke out those corners really good. And so now you want to head over to the iron and press that flat and then tuck in these raw edges maybe a half an inch and press that down so that you have a nice finished edge on the top there 
We're gonna fit the zipper inside of this, but it's a lot easier to do if it's pressed. All right, now I have two little zipper gussets and I have a 12 inch zipper here. I chose green to pick up some of the green in the flowers on the outside of the bag. This is a, a YKK zipper. They're really good quality. They come in a lot of great colors and I will post the link to my zipper source on the blog. So if you head on over to sospire.com under the city slicker post, you'll find a link where you too can order these awesome zippers. So now we want to slide the zipper into this pocket that we've created here. And it just fits right in there. And you don't want to get too close to the zipper part because you don't want it to catch, but you want it even. So you're gonna pin that in place and just move along there and you see how it fits right in there on the back and the front. So I'm gonna work all the way down that, pinning it in place. Here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put on the other side too so I can stitch them both at the same time. zipper and I always test my zippers just to make sure you wouldn't want to have a defective zipper and then have done all this work so it also gives you a chance to make sure it's not catching on the fabric and you can adjust if needed now when I head over to the sewing machine I'm going to stitch as close as I can to the edge of this and the best way to do that is to adjust your needle position on the machine to the left so that you're sewing snug against the edge of this and I'm going to put two rows of stitching to hold it on each side. go I'll just be pulling out those pins the point where you need to get past the zipper pull I just lift up the foot and unzip that and I reinforce at the beginning and the end with the back stitch I'm going to put a single row of stitching down this other side before I do the double stitch.
zipper is secure and I just want to add that second row of stitching to reinforce the zipper and add that detail that we talked about that really makes it pro. So I have to remember to readjust my needle position. Casing is complete, and I'm just going to trim up the little extra strings like this. I'll test that one more time. Super happy with that. All right, we're going to set this aside and craft the straps. So, for the short handles, which are going to be used just to carry the bag in hand, I I'm going to craft those from two pieces of the navy twill, which measures five inches wide by 12 inches long. And to make this strap, you're going to press that fabric in half long ways and open that up and bring the edges in to meet on that center line. And then fold over the edge so that you have a nice strap stitched down both sides. And I have two of those straps. which is going to be removable. For this, I opted to use a one inch um, nylon webbing. And what I did is I went to my local Walmart and I purchased a dog leash. They come in a rainbow of colors and I just repurposed that. I thought it was a great value and it was super convenient. So 
check out your uh, Walmart or Target and see if you can find one of the generic dog leashes there in the bargain section and repurpose that as well. And then I'm using two heavy duty swivel fobs at the end of that. And so the entire length of my strap measures 37 inches and I pre-fit that to my body to make sure that the bag is gonna hit exactly where I want it to. And I had cut off the original hardware off the leash so there's a little rough edge there that's fraying. So I fold that under a smidge and then thread that through the hardware and I'm going to stitch across this once at the top of the fold and then at the bottom and then I'm going to go ahead and put an X through it as well so it's really stable and I'm going to show you when we finish the bag how you can make this an adjustable strap without having that try glide piece or bag you know strap adjuster on it. Now I also have two shorter pieces of webbing which measure six inches long and I thread those through two one and a half inch o-rings. I like the rings as opposed to the d-rings because then they just turn and they're never upside down. What I find if you use D-rings is that as they turn, then you get kind of in this weird crook with the hardware, whereas these rings just rotate and they're never gonna be upside down. So my preference is to always use the rings. These are going to become the little tabs that hang off of the side of the bag so you can attach the strap to it. So I have two of those with the rings attached and what I want to do is um, attach this hardware to the strap first and then I'm just going to stitch one line across the base of this just so it doesn't wiggle on me and it's secure. Notice I'm using the needle down function and then just pivoting so I don't have to continuously um, reinforce with a back stitch.
strap and just want to trim up the threads. complete and we're gonna start pinning and securing all of these components to the bag. So I have the bag here and I just want to lay that flat on the table. And I'm going to take the zipper panel and center that and then this zipper is I'm going to fold back that top edge a little bit and you you don't have to work with it flat whatever's comfort comfortable for you but I'm going to align that did you see how I did this this is going to get attached from the inside and then you're going to sew through all of those layers but you want it centered so for me this is the most natural way to do it but as long as you get it attached so you're kind of making a sandwich there with the zipper panel the interior and the exterior so that everything's centered and then I'm pinning through all three layers and I will Flip that over and do the same thing on the other side. I'm just folding that back a little bit, making sure it's even. Then I'll bring that up and start pinning. zippers should be in place there and if you stand it up I'll give you a top view the ends here are going to remain open and I'll show you how to style that at the end but I don't want you to worry about that you're only going to be stitching the zipper in place from the side seam to the side seam. All right, but before we do that, we need to attach the handles. So I have my short little handles here, and I wanna position those evenly across from each side. So I'm it's looking like two and a half inches from the side seam to the edge of the strap is going to be good but I can play with that after I get them in place and you just remove one of those pins and tuck that in between the exterior and the interior layer at the two and a half inch mark strap on and the drop on these handles is 
very short because that's my preference. It's a three inch handle drop and it's just so I can hold the bag in my hand or hang it on a hook. All right, so that strap is in place, looks great. Now we just need to attach the side tabs at the center of the side panel. So you'll lift up that zipper just a smidge and insert those little tabbies right at the center point between the two side seams. Pin those in place. Do the same thing on the other side and just lift up that little zipper tail a bit so you can get in there. And it's going in between the interior and the exterior so that raw edge and all those little threads are hidden, centered between the two seams. Okay, so everything is pinned in place. We have our zipper panel on top, and once I stitch this, you'll see that this zipper being up like that is not an issue. It's very stylish. This just happens to be um, how it looks right now. So I'm going to stitch all the way across the top. I'm going to open this zipper so I can stitch all the way around the edge and I'm going to just tuck these zipper panels down. I'll tuck you through it as we go so that they're not stitched. I'm going to reinforce at the tabs because it's going to be a point of stress for the bag so I might go over that two or three times and I'm going to reinforce at the handle. So the easiest way to do this is to remove that sewing machine deck in your machine so you have a nice narrow neck and then I like to start with the side panel so I'm going to fit that on there and I'm going to start just a little bit before that turquoise tab. And I'll take out that pin and I'm going to back stitch over this so it's super secure. Just going to go slow all the way around the edge. And as I approach this part where now I'm running into the zipper, I want to tuck that tail under and into the bag so that I'm just catching, you know, let's, let me. I want to show you a different way to do this because you can't see what I'm doing under there. Just fold that, that zipper down like that so it looks like a triangle, okay? That's the best way to do this and then Repin that. I'm sure if you can see that. The dark makes it hard to see. But I'm, when I get to those zippers, I only when as soon as it reaches that side seam, I'm just gonna fold that corner over. You're not gonna stitch that end, you just want to move it out of the way. Alright. And it might even be easier for you to stitch it from the top so you can see what you're doing. All right, so I'm gonna go back over to the machine and, and after the zipper's in place, it's, gonna, it's going to make more sense because I'll be able to show you the stitch lines. It's just now if I do that, I'm getting poked. Get to the handle, 
go ahead and back stitch over that. That'd be another stress point for the bag. And as I move along, I'm just making sure that I'm keeping all three layers in place. So just go slow so that you know where all your layers are because you are moving a lot of fabric around here. So just go nice and slow. Don't forget to reinforce this tab. Then I want to go back in and reinforce. So I have my zipper in place there and these corners got folded down like a little triangle. They just got folded under a bit so they're out of the way and they're not attached to those sides. But the zipper is attached at the top from the side seam to the side seam. I want to go in and just reinforce the handles with one more line of stitching. You could sew it right on top of that line if you like, or you could go below. And I want to reinforce the side straps as well.
just going to trim up all these loose strings and then I'm going to give you the full tour of our awesome City Slicker Totes. Yay! Alright everyone, we are done. Thank you so much for sewing with me. This was our first really big project since the revamp and I'm absolutely thrilled with how the bag turned out. I'm thrilled with the process. It fits nice into my life. The 30 minute sewing is great. And um, the one thing that I really discovered with this project was I was so accustomed to just being able to make myself something and have it now. We live in this world of now, instant gratification. And I had to wait three weeks to get this bag, which is incredible. So it's a really, truly feels like a gift to myself. And I had lots of time to think about the design and the function while we made it. So I hope that even if you are able to access all three of these sessions at one time, that maybe you will consider spanning your project out to take three weeks or an hour and a half and just sewing 30 minutes once a week on this project so that you can experience that same excitement that I did while making this. So I want to give you the full tour. I love it. This is how I would wear it if I wanted to wear it on my shoulder. And the way that you do this is you take both Um, hooks and hook it on the same side of the ring. So you thread this one through the other ring and then hook both hooks on one ring and then you can have a shoulder bag. Now if you wanted to wear that crossbody, you would hook one hook on each ring. And this length is perfect for me. I pre-measured I like the bag to fall, the top of the bag to fall right at the top of my hip bone. And that's really comfortable for me. I don't feel like the bag is dragging too low. You can see the awesome laminated base. I won't have to worry about this purse getting dirty. That makes me very happy. I have my side pocket. So like if I wanted to put my phone right there, you know, you like to take pictures and everything is just accessible. This bag is truly, is designed to meet my very needs and I hope it meets yours as well. I have water bottle pockets on the side here. Then I have my short handles, which a lot of times, especially if I'm, you know, in and out of the grocery store, I just want that bag right there. I also like to hang my bag up when I come home. Here's a nice short hook. It's not dragging low where the dogs would be messing with it. Then we have our zipper top, which is important if you're in the city these days. And I hope you can see how that zipper was attached. That might have been a little confusing, but it's not, it's loose at the ends. And the reason that I don't attach it all the way across is for loading purposes, I want, I just like that extra space to be able to open the bag up so I can really see what's inside. And what I do find anyways is if you attach it all the way around, it becomes a stressor point and it's gonna separate anyways. So you can wear it with the tails hanging out or if you like, just tuck it under like that. There's really no wrong way. If you wanna attach the, the zipper all the way, go for it. You can also just fold that in like that and it's kind of you know becomes a recessed zipper like that I just let it however it ends up is fine by me and I think that looks fine right okay so then inside we have that awesome thick padded base so I can feel good about putting my nice camera in there no problem I have a pocket um, an extra slip pocket there for essentials on the side. I have my wide elasticized pocket to put another water if I like. And I have two really deep pockets. I could put my wallet in there easily. 
I have a two shallow pockets, which would be great for tall items. I believe my sunglasses will fit in there. And then a very short shallow pocket, which I'm gonna use to put my lip gloss in. So this was great fun. I thank you again for joining me. I am so excited to see your finished bags and I hope you'll post photos for me. You can find SoSpire on Facebook and I'll be there checking to see as well as Instagram. So if you can post me a picture, what would be even more fun is if you posted an action shot of your bag out there in the city. That would make me so happy. I will be back next week. We're going to make something new. I honestly, I haven't decided what we're going to make. I'm bouncing around a couple ideas. I just, you know, want to be called to it. So I'm going to wait and see what the need is. Like this bag, this design, uh, I, had a, I had a need for it and it worked out perfectly and I'm thrilled. So I want the same thing to happen organically with our next project. So until then, have a great week. Thanks so much.